I'm sharing some of my recent experiments with shrink plastic with Effie, or I think I should rather say my shrink plastic failures. I tried this medium out for the first time and quickly learned that it's not as easy as it looks in the tutorials that I have watched, but I'm so determined to make some for today's prompt friendship bracelet. Welcome back to Defamember 2023. It's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. And as I'm sure you know, I'm co-hosting this series with my dear friend Louisa Heinzel, making fun ephemera in December. So if you're new here, please check the link in the description box with all the information you need to catch up, including freebies and other printables, as well as a playlist. So let me show you a close up of all of these fails. <laughs> so there's a huge learning curve to this. I have not come out at the top yet. I'm still learning. It's really a struggle. Some of these were okay before I added a varnish. I used this one, which is just like a regular transparent gooey. It's quite thick. It takes up to 24 hours to dry. And I don't know why it's doing what it did. So let me show you. You see this crack here? And it's also not as transparent as I thought it would be. And all of these have these cracks. You see that? <laughs> here as well, and here. And look how, how milky they are. I don't understand at all. These here of Effie are the ones I have made in my oven. I tried doing several of these at once on a baking tray, but then the issue is when you take them out, you don't have enough time to flatten them before they get hard. So I ended up doing them one by one in the oven. That way I just take it out, press them flat, and I put the next one in. That's okay because you really only have like a few seconds before they turn hard. These here, <laughs> actually these as well. I tried with my heat tool. So this one that I always use for crafting. And as you can see, these here have all lost their shape. So this here, for example, was something exactly like this. So here you also maybe see the dimensions. This is the original. This is what it shrank into. So it shrinks to approximately 40%. But I think it also depends on the brand. And I know longer shapes are more problematic because the way they curl up, sometimes they stick to each other. It's really not so easy. And these ones, I mean, look at this one. This one folded onto each other. I had no way of getting it flattened down before it got hard. There's a huge bubble in this one and the shape is <laughs> not a rectangle anymore. And these two were done using stamps. So this one is from this butterfly stamp. So you, again, you see the dimension. This is the original size. This is what it shrinks down to. And this little bird is from this stamp, which is one of my oldest wooden stamps. Both of them have the varnish on top and both of them have a really weird, irregular surface. And this one has a crack as well. So didn't do so well. The back sides of all of these look great. So the back side is the one you would print on. It's this frosty side. So that looks awesome. So if I would glue these down someplace, they would look really cute. So I'm definitely not throwing them away because this is still very cute. But of course, the goal is to get something that's going to look good on both sides that I can use as a charm. So I'm going to try this again. I'm not giving up yet. I had 10 sheets in my pack. So let me show you what my pack looks like. So this is mine. It's from Amazon. There's 10 sheets and it's for inkjet and laser printer. This is obviously a German brand. Let me show you what they look like. So this is obviously a cut off piece. So on one side you have this more rough milky surface and on the other side you have a very shiny surface. And the side that you need to print on is this rough surface. So depending on how your printer prints, that's how you need to put it into your printer. 
So these are the images I want to print. I made a test print on regular copy paper to make sure that the size is what I want. So this is one of my freebies. So you can find these freebies in my Defamerember link below. There's a whole section in that link for freebies. All of them are there. I'll show you in a moment how I actually printed this because these are two different sizes. So I'm printing first this one and then feeding this page into the printer again and printing this one because they don't have the same size settings. This one I printed using the setting of printing four images per sheet, which gives me 25% of the image. And then for this one, I used four images per sheet, but I also scaled it down additionally to 85%. So this, this one you see here now is not reduced to 85%. So this is the size I would get if I just print four images per sheet. But now I'll show you how I do it when I print on the actual sheets. So what you see coming out here is the first print where I said four to a page. So it comes out at 25%. And then I'm putting it back in that rear drawer. It's not a drawer, whatever that is. <laughs> and I'm printing again on that same sheet, this time the butterfly with four images to a sheet, but also reduced to 85%. And then I'm also printing this sheet in addition. So this is the first sheet I printed. I just backed it now with some white copy paper so that you can see the images better. And then I also printed this one, which was my Butterflies Freebie 2, because I think these should be a really good size as well. Something to keep in mind if you do this with other images is that your images will get darker once they shrink. So if you use fairly dark images like this one here, I don't know how well we're going to still see the colors because it is quite dark. So the next step now is to cut the images out. So first I'll cut around them roughly. Something to keep in mind is that these sheets, they break quite easily. So you have to be careful how you cut them. So first I'm cutting them out roughly with my big scissors. You can already see here on the corner, you see that there's already a tear right there. So I have this and I'll continue then with smaller scissors. So now when we cut out the image, I am going to leave a little bit of a border, but you don't have to. Let me show you again on another one. So you see here, you don't really lose the border. The first one I did was this one and I left this big border. So you he see here the difference. I mean, this is fine as well. If that's what you want, it's definitely easier to cut out like this and it looks completely different than having it like this. I actually like both versions. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a border just because it's easier to cut. And when I come to places like this now, where I would usually just continue cutting up like this, I'm not going to do that because there's a big chance that this will break if I do that. So I'm going to turn it and cut it from the other side so that it hopefully won't break. It already has a little bit of a break there. I don't know if you can see it. There's a tiny, yeah, you can't really see it. There's a tiny slit here now. So that is something to keep in mind. Maybe choose images that are not super detailed. Okay, so this one is good to go. And I just realized I forgot something. No, <laughs> I forgot. I wanted to leave a little place here to punch the hole in because you have to punch the hole in before they shrink. So I'll have to punch the hole into his head. I'm so sorry, Effie. And you want to use the big eyelet punch. Also, if you have like a regular hole punch, make sure you use a big hole. The bigger, the better, because it will shrink. You see this hole here? This was the same size. So with this one, I still have the chance to leave a little bit of space on top here that I don't have to punch it right into the middle of his head. So I'll go ahead and cut all the images out that I want to shrink and then we'll try our luck again. So I have all of the images cut out that I want to try today. As you can see, I cut off the feelers because I just thought they were too delicate and they're going to curl up too much. So I decided to put the hole in the wing 
and as an alternative for all of you who don't want to get the shrink plastic you can of course print them the same way i printed them now on either cardstock if your printer can do that or regular copy paper and then mount it onto some cardstock or some cardboard and then cut them out you could add some sort of a glossy finish to them if you wanted to and then use them as dangles so let's take these to the oven and hopefully at least some of these will work out fingers crossed so i'm in the kitchen now and i put one butterfly onto a baking paper on a baking tray and i will put them in my oven one by one now you will see in a moment it's going to curl up a lot so much that you think it's completely ruined and then it will start to flatten out and that's the point where you really have to take it out quickly And then you have to really quickly put something on it. So I'm using this acrylic block from stamping. And then you flatten it. Not bad, this one worked quite well, but you see how dark it is now? I'm trying the really big butterfly next. By the way, I have my oven at about 170 degrees Celsius. I'll figure out what that is in Fahrenheit and add it to the screen. With this butterfly, I'm afraid that it's going to curl up so much that the wings will touch and maybe not uncurl again because they will stick together, but we will see. Almost looks like it's alive, doesn't it? It's kind of spooky. Now we have to wait till it flattens. It's quite nerve-wracking actually. <laughs> it's not changing anymore, so I need to quickly take it out and see if I can save it. Right after I stopped the camera, it did flatten out a little bit. Wow, that took quite a long time to flatten. So I guess you have to be patient. Some take longer to flatten. Oh wow, this is actually quite good. But you see how dark it is? but it turned out quite well. Ooh, I'm surprised. Very nice. Here's the next one. And I'm thinking now with the first batch that I showed you earlier, maybe I took them out of the oven too early. You can't leave them in too long because then they will bubble. But these are all turning out quite well, actually. The turquoise has turned into like a green almost. Also, when I did it first, I had my oven a lot hotter than this. So maybe it's also better to not have, have your oven too hot. And by the way, what you're seeing here is real time. It's not sped up or anything. It really looks like they're alive. It is so spooky. <sighs> So here are my results. I am over the moon. <laughs> this is the best it has worked so far. The reason why I originally added this varnish was because some of them, like this one here, thought maybe it depends on how I have them laying on the baking tray, whether the glossy side is up or down, but I believe I had them all with the glossy side up actually. But some of them, I don't know if you can see it in the video, this is not straight the edges are a little bit curved up so that's why i thought adding the varnish would kind of flatten that out a little bit you can't really see it on the camera but this one kind of like has an edge whereas for example this one does not it's totally straight you can see that there right so i don't know why it does that these are the back sides. So this is the matte side, also beautiful. But I just love how thick and sturdy they get once they have been shrunk. So they are really like substantial plastic. They almost seem like resin pieces. And then we have these two, but you see how much darker they all got? This one also, maybe you can see, has like more of an edge there because it's not as flat but this one here is completely flat it's just so weird i'm very happy i made the hole in the wing i think it would not have looked good here somehow between the antennae or something like that then we have this one which is also totally flat 
green instead of turquoise, but okay. And then we have our two little Effies. They turned out fabulous. This one is not as clear. I don't know why. This one is. It's very strange. I really don't know what these things depend on. These are the back sides, the matte side. So cute. Super happy with those. I just want to show you again a comparison. So I have this left over from the original print when I used them for the clocks and wings prompt. So this is <laughs> the big one. You see how much darker it is and how much it shrank. It's just incredible. And this would be this yellow one. It's just amazing. And this one is this one right here. So my idea of making this friendship bracelet is to then actually hang it here on my spine together with my other charms. Because this friendship bracelet, of course, symbolizes the friendship that we have in our junk journal community. Hello, Effie. I've missed you. I haven't seen you at all today. What have you been up to? Oh, this is a poem you wrote about friendship in our community. Oh my goodness, Effie, this is incredible. It's quite the long poem. Oh, wow. Okay, you want me to read this to our viewers? Uh, definitely, I want to share this. And you also want me to provide this as a freebie. Well, of course, I want to share this as well. I am so excited to read this poem. Thank you so much, sweetie. So the title is Bound by Creativity, a tribute to junk journal friends. Oh, I love that already. In a world of pages and patterns so bright lies a bond of friendship, a creative light. Through scraps and trinkets, stories we weave in the junk journal community we believe. Together we gather from near and from far. Whew, I'm tearing up already. Uniting under the same twinkling star. I'm sorry, but this is quite emotional. <laughs> Was not expecting this, Effie. With each snippet and doodle, memories take flight in our cozy circle. Every creation's a delight. We share our tales, both happy and blue, supporting each other as true friends do. In the rustle of paper, the clink of a charm, we find a comfort, a soothing balm. Our journals are more than mere books on a shelf. They're reflections of us, pieces of self. I'm so sorry, I, this is just incredible. In this community, we find a rare treasure, the joy of crafting, a pleasure without measure. So here's to our friendship in this artistic spree. In the world of junk journals, we're family, round not by blood, but by glue and by thread, in a tapestry of kinship beautifully spread. Through ups and downs, we laugh and we create in this community of love. There's no room for hate. So let's raise our scissors, our ribbons and lace in this wonderful world. We each have a place. Sweet Effie, you have no idea how you've touched me with this poem and I'm sure many, many crafters out there who are sitting at their craft desk, maybe not having the best time, especially during December, going through all sorts of hardships in their life. But our community is so, so special and we do support each other mostly and each and every one of us belong in this community and it's really only a place for love. This, this poem, it really summarizes what junk journaling is in my eyes and the importance of it and how it goes way, way beyond just gluing down paper. So this is for all of you. You can find it linked in my general Defemeremember link in the description box of this video. Thank you so much, Effie. Of course, I had to have a moment during Defemeremember 2023 
where I was going to cry. <laughs> so that was it. I hope that's the only one. <laughs> I have space in this beautiful pocket made by dear Louisa. So this is the perfect place for this wonderful poem. Let's get back to making a bracelet. So I have added jump rings to all of my charms. This wouldn't even be necessary. You could obviously just add some twine through the hole without adding a jump ring. I'm actually not even sure if I like the jump ring solution, but yeah, let's see. So when I think of a friendship bracelet, something that comes to my mind immediately, I want to share this with you. It's very, very special. It's this bracelet I have had since I was a little girl and it is not per se a friendship bracelet. I don't know what these would be called in English. In German, we say Bettelarmband, which means literally translated beggar's bracelet. As you can see here, it has very many charms here. So when I was a little girl, I got the bracelet without any charms, including, I think, one or two charms to add. And then for every occasion, like birthday or Christmas, I would get a couple of charms from my parents and those would be added to the bracelets. So as the years went by, I now have this huge collection of charms on this bracelet. And it's very, very cute because I know when I got which charm from where, which is so, so sweet. Like all these colored enamel ones I got as a girl. And obviously my mom had bought them from one store because they all have a similar look to them and then, you know, gave them to me the following years. But then they also gave me some when they were traveling, actually not just traveling, but my dad was working in various countries when I was in my early 20s. For example, we have this boot here. This came from Argentina when they were there. Or we have this cocoa bean, which is from when they were in Nigeria. Then we have this camel and the shoe. And I think there was one more, yeah. This coffee pot from when they were in Saudi Arabia. So the friendship bracelet I'm making now is inspired by this. Actually, let me show you what it looks like on my arm. I haven't worn this in quite a while, actually. I can't wear it in my videos because it would make a lot of noise <laughs> on this glass plate, especially. So this is what it looks like when I have it on my hand. And it's definitely my most precious piece of jewelry that I own all the more because both of my parents have passed so lots of memories in this and super sentimental so this is what i want to base today's friendship bracelet on even though i'm adding all the charms at once this symbolizes that other bracelet for me and these charms for me represent you and our junk journal community and we're all going to be stuck together on this bracelet together the only chain I currently have that's not used is this one. And these chains are too small to fit these jump rings. So that's not going to work. So I went through my costume jewelry and I found this one, which I actually haven't worn in a really long time. And it has a chain here, which has already started to blacken. So I probably wouldn't wear this anyway. But one of these sides would be long enough to use as a bracelet. So I could just cut off this ring here and that would be a great length for a bracelet. And it's also short enough to fit on my journal spine. So I'm just going to open this part. Okay, so I have my bracelet here. So this totally works. So now we just need to add the charms. So I've chosen these charms and they all have special meanings. So I want to share those with you. So as you can see, I chose three butterflies. 
So this first butterfly represents transformation and growth. So this is for your personal growth and creative evolution of you, yourself. Just like a butterfly emerges from a cocoon, you might start your journey in junk journaling or crafting as beginners. And hopefully through inspiration from our videos and this amazing community, transform into more confident and skilled creators. This beautiful butterfly number two symbolizes diversity and individuality. So each butterfly is obviously unique in its pattern and its color, much like you who come from various backgrounds and have your own unique stories and styles. And this charm celebrates our diversity, acknowledging that each of us brings our own individual flair and perspective to this community. And this butterfly represents joy and inspiration. So the flight of a butterfly is often seen as carefree and joyful. And this charm for me symbolizes the happiness and inspiration that you are hopefully getting from our content, Louise's and mine. And our mission, of course, is to encourage you to explore your own creativity and find joy in the simple pleasure of creating. And then, of course, we have these two little Effies. So if you've watched both of our series, Louise's and mine, you will know that Louise mostly uses this Effie version and I mostly used this Effie version. And so, of course, they represent Louise and myself. And then we have five more charms here. The Christmas tree simply represents the time of year. We are in December. The Christmas tree is traditional for December. So I thought it needs to go on this bracelet. Then we have these angel wings. And just like angels are often seen as guardians, these wings for me symbolize the support and care that we offer to each other in our community, uplifting and inspiring one another through our creative journeys. And also this symbolizes for me all the loved ones that have passed but are still with us on our journeys and in our hearts. Try not to get emotional again. <laughs> Then we have this little bird and this little bird represents freedom and expression found within our community and the ability to see things from different perspectives. It symbolizes the diverse and unique ideas each of you bring to the table, enriching the community with your individuality. Next, we have a magic wand which signifies the magical ability in our community to turn ordinary materials into extraordinary pieces of art. It embodies the creative spark that is shared and nurtured within the group, turning ideas into tangible and beautiful creations. And last but certainly not least, we have these hearts. They represent deep and heartfelt connections formed within our junk journal community. And it's a reminder of the passion for our craft and the warm, welcoming environment that binds every one of us together. And it also symbolizes my love for and special friendship with my little junk journal sister, Louise. So Effie, here's my Defem Rember bracelet. What do you think? So each charm carries a special meaning, reflecting the values and spirit of our community. And together they create a powerful symbol of unity, creativity and friendship that our community cherishes. Right Effie? <laughs> So I'm not actually going to wear this, although as you see, I could, but instead I'm going to attach this to my journal spine. 
So I'm just going to clip it onto my ring fastener here. And it has the perfect length. So once again, great teamwork, little Effie. Thank you so much for your incredible poem. So together we completed our friendship bracelet prompt. I hope you have fun making your friendship bracelet, whatever that might be for you. It might be something completely different. But whatever it is, please have fun in the creative process. And let's check out Louise's video because I am dying to see what she did with this prompt. Love you guys. Mwah. Mwah.